A big rig smashes into the back of a small SUV, killing a person inside. Police did not issue a traffic ticket to the driver of that semi. It happened just outside of Phoenix. And we sent our investigative reporter Morgan Lowe to find out exactly what happened here. You are looking at the event data recorder of a big rig heading north on I-17 on May 27th, 2017, just after 12 noon. The bottom of the screen is the truck's location. Top right shows the driver and the top left is the driver's view. And that was the big rig plowing into the back of a Toyota RAV4 at 72 miles per hour lifting the small SUV off the ground. That moment, it crashed into us. It, it crashed right into us, and the car started spinning, and it's everything you think about, you know, like in the movies. You, your life flashes before your eyes, and everything was like white, and you could hear metal crashing and glass breaking, and then the airbags popping out. Um, I'm sure it was only a few seconds, but it felt like forever. <laughs> Cheryl Sabal was driving that RAV4 with her father, sister, and stepmother. It sounds like you were remarkably aware of what was going on that entire time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. And what Cheryl immediately realized was that her stepmother was critically injured. She was struggling for breath, and she wasn't responding because I was calling her name. We were all calling her name. Um, and I remember my father asking, is she okay, is she okay? And I was telling him that she's unconscious. Grace Sabal did not survive that crash. And three years later, the Sabal family feels the void she left behind every day. It was a very, very big loss to our family. Yeah, she was a big part of, of, of our family. I, I, we lost our mother when we were very young and my father married later on in life. Um, he found grace and that was such a blessing for both him and for us because she kind of brought our family back together. She became the matriarch. This is the DPS crash investigation and it shows that although the collision may have taken place here, the events that led to it started long before the semi reached this stretch of freeway. According to investigators who looked at the big rig, the analog brake system light was on, but was covered with a piece of black tape indicating a fault within the system. The driver hadn't logged the total miles he drove. One investigator called it a false record. The driver, David Stout, wrote that traffic had come to a dead stop and I could not stop fast enough. Investigators concluded the semi brakes didn't engage until it was approximately 50 feet from the Toyota or half a second from impact. And if you look at Stout's behavior in the minutes before the crash, he's fidgeting, steering the semi with his knees and texting. He doesn't seem to notice that traffic up ahead has come to a stop. After all of that, not only was the driver of the semi not arrested, he wasn't even issued a traffic ticket. This should have been charged as a vehicular homicide against the driver, and quite frankly, the trucking company should have also have been criminally charged. Tom Ryan is an attorney who represents the Sabal family. He says DPS troopers failed to adequately investigate the crash. They didn't collect data that the onboard computer recorded, and Ryan argues that just the tape over the analog warning light meant that truck was a time bomb. What should that have told them about the condition of that semi? It told us that the maintenance people back at the yard for this corporation knew that this vehicle was unsafe, and rather than deal with the brakes, they decided to put it back out on the road where it was a risk and a danger to every traveler on Interstate 17 or any highway that truck was on. The truck was owned by Phoenix-based Michael Most Trucking. The company has a $6 million judgment outstanding for a previous fatal crash in New Mexico, which means even if the Sabals were to sue, they would likely not get a penny. DPS sent this letter to Tom Ryan. The department concluded that the investigation into the fatal collision was appropriate, thorough, and in accordance with training, policy, 
and general law enforcement practices. What do you do from here? What, what recourse does this family have? Criminally, I'm going to go back to the Maricopa County Attorney's Office at this point and ask them to reevaluate this case because nobody from DPS ever notified Maricopa County Attorney's Office that it should be prosecuted. Cheryl Sabal believes DPS and its investigators let her family down. I'm angry at the driver, yes, because he made bad decisions. I don't purposefully believe that he set out to harm anyone that day, but he, because of his bad decisions, somebody, somebody was, was killed with the Department of Public Safety, yeah, I'm angry because it's their job to hold these people accountable. It's their job to protect the citizens of, of this state. They're there to uphold justice. And just DPS officials sent us a response to our questions this afternoon. They said they expressed their deepest condolences to the family that lost a loved one in the crash, but they doubled down said they reviewed the case and stand by their conclusion. Yetta? Morgan, that video is so hard to watch and our hearts go out to that family. I gotta ask, did they explain why they didn't ticket that driver or even cite the company? You no, know, that's a question we do not have an answer to. They only stated that the investigation was appropriate and in accordance with best law enforcement practices. And what about that driver? Is he still on the road with the company? Uh, I called David Stout and left a message. He didn't respond. I also called, emailed, and sent a fax to the trucking company asking a number of questions, including whether Stout was still driving. They didn't respond either. And uh, looking back at that scene, that crash scene, it looked terrible. We obviously know now because of your story that one woman died in this, but there were other vehicles involved in this as well. Yeah, that crash totaled three vehicles in addition to damaging the semi, and three people were seriously injured in addition to the fatality and still not even a citation. Wow, great work with this story, Morgan. Hopefully there'll be an update soon on it. Thank you.